young and pretty, lost and nowhere to be found. Lee Porter, a 19-year-old Colorado waif of a woman who simply vanished in June of 2014. She was small, but she was feisty. Police launch a massive search in the Denver suburbs. They're still looking for Lee Porter. Friends and family are desperately searching for Lee Porter. And now, more than two years later, Lee still not found. Her mother, Renee Jackson, follows her own leads, tramping through the winding, dusty trails of central Colorado with search dogs, ignoring warnings. Keep out, private road. It may be your last earthly move. OK, go find. Good boy. Why come now? Obviously, the police aren't searching for her. Because my mama heart can't just, I can't accept the fact that I don't know where my daughter is. I, I can't live with that. Renee, Wendy Kessinger of Canine Forensics and her dogs are searching here on Deer Mountain. It looks almost a little needle in a haystack. In Cotopaxi, Colorado, population 47, it's claimed to fame whitewater rafting through one of Colorado's deepest canyons, Royal Gorge. Cotopaxi's really in the middle of nowhere. It's three hours from Denver. It's a mountain town. People live far away from each other. There's barely a stoplight. And the main hangout is a general store, which is also a gas station. And it's also the only restaurant in town. It's also where the vivacious teenager grew up, a future as bright as her personality. She was an amazing young woman, kind of a, a joker. She loved her brother like crazy. She was very social. She had lots of friends. Among those friends, high school BF Mallory Nixon. She was very outgoing, very bubbly. You know, she could have met someone five seconds ago and she'd already feel like their best friend. At Cotopaxi High, Lee is an average student, more interested in the social scene than academics, hanging with the art crowd, deep into electronic music and concerts in faraway Denver a small town girl anxious to record her every move on her camera phone. She was kind of a selfie hound, which I used to make fun of her. Like, get that phone out of your face. But I'm glad she took as many as she did, for sure. Because now, it's all mom has, memories. And as Lee moved away from the slow pace of Cotopaxi, the memories began to turn dark. A good girl alone now a two-hour drive from family, quickly slipping into a world full of temptation and danger, secretly dropping out of class here at Trinidad State College and then moving in with an older man. I don't understand it. I don't understand what made her go to this, um, to this person who was much older and, you know, it was kind of bad news, so. He's 38. She's not out of her teens. Jessie Mine, a tattoo artist who Mallory Nixon says has a taste for tender young women and hard drugs. She wasn't involved in drugs at all before she met him? Not before she met him, no. And then how bad did it get? It got bad right away. We were going to a concert together, and as we were driving up to Denver, she said, I did heroin for the first time, and I am hooked on it. What did that say to you? It broke my heart. It really did. While all this is happening, Lee's heart is broken too by another man, a man she is closer to than any boyfriend, her older brother, Max. She was basically like my best friend. We did everything together, listened to the same music, did the same things, fought like brother and sister all the time, and we were really close. We were able to go to each other and talk to each other about everything. But when Lee needed her brother most, just as she's meeting the older man, Max, not expecting the downward spiral to come, moves to California to open his own business. She got really depressed, and then she met Jesse. He's a 38-year-old guy. So she was uh, attracted to this older man. Yes, but he lied about his age at first. And then later, after they clicked, then told her. Was there a certain vulnerability about your, your sister that perhaps allowed this to happen? She lets people in really easily, so if you show any affection or care, she'll most likely open her arms up to you. Lee Porter knew her life had taken a turn for the worse, desperately looking for a course correction. Her friend Mallory says in the days before Lee went missing, she was struggling to kick a heroin habit, 
attending Narcotics Anonymous. She said she wants help, but she doesn't know what to do. She doesn't know who to go to because she didn't want to leave Jesse. Was she getting out of it, do you think? Oh, she definitely was. Um, the day before she went missing, I saw her down in Pueblo, and she had been off of it for three days. The trouble in Lee's life is about to get worse. Jesse breaks up with her, packs his truck, and moves east, leaving Lee with no place to live. She packs her car and heads north to Denver with no real plans. So Lee starts looking for help on social media, telling a Facebook friend, I'm about to be homeless. And then, as her brother finds out, she just drops off the grid. I knew there was something wrong right away because I couldn't get a hold of her. It was just days of calling back and calling, 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 calling my mom, I told her there's something wrong. The family goes to police, who immediately turned to boyfriend Jesse. His trip to the East Coast cut short by a summons to the interrogation room. Can you tell me what your relationship is with Thea? For 90 minutes, police hammer Jesse, and he admits to some rough times. It's like the biggest fight we ever had. Uh, when you're, you guys arguing or you guys scream? No, not hitting each other, just screaming at each other. We would fight about cheating on each other. 